Hey, FR Sky fans, this is Steve. I am Steve with FR Sky. I actually work for the company. I am going to show you how to move around efficiently inside of Ethos. Ethos is an operating system that comes on our flagship tandem transmitters. I am going to just give you a down and dirty tutorial on this. This is going to be something for pilots who have some, at least some experience working with radio transmitters. Um, what you're looking at here is the screen for a tandem transmitter. This LCD screen right here, it's push button. You can go in here and you can push on anything. It's a touch screen. And then there's a couple dials on the side. Um, we're gonna set up a fictitious plane today and that is a plane known as the Tundra. It's sold by Hobby King. It is one motor, two ailerons, two flaps, one elevator, one rudder. Fairly common tractor fed plane, kind of similar to a Cessna. Um, anyway, I want to show you the screens. This is the home screen we're looking at. If you want to edit, you press this one, the configure screen. You can come in here and you can change the widgets. You can set up the timers. You can actually add more screens in there. You can do a lot with this. Um, Typically, these are great, especially if you would like to have multiple screens for setting up your planes or checking things out. But when I fly, usually I'm not looking at the screen, so um, I don't pay a lot of attention to that. And fortunately, in this config, the simulator, we can't really do things like set up uh, images and all the other fun things I would like to do. Um, so just to show you that the I showed you this one before just by pressing the display button. This is the system icon. This is the gear icon right here. These are everything to do with the, setting up the transmitter itself, such as the date and time, hardware, such as screen brightness and volume. You can check on battery. If you want to get to the next page, you hit the press the page up, page down. Um, here's the info. This tells you everything you need to know about the radio as far as the firmware is concerned. And all the firmware on the internal modules it even tells you the firmware of the receivers which I will talk about a little bit later um, anyway on uh, this this is if I hit page back page up you can also do that by holding down on this and swiping um, we're gonna work on the airplane icon which is the model icon right here and we're going to go in and set up a the model for the Tundra um, I'm going to show you but the most people will try to go into here into the mixer and start building the mixer by hand the faster way to do it is go to model select and go in here and create a new model select airplane uh, you will notice that there's no Delta wing I'll show you how to get to that in a second um, this is the Tundra has one motor, but if it had four motors, this is how you would change it. Um, we go in there and it has, of course, aileron. I, I always set them up on two channels, even though you can't set up on one channel. And I did mention it has flaps and we'll set the flaps up on two channels. I'll go into the tail and one of the options is none. And the reason why they say no tail is it's the same as a delta wing. If you accept this you can go next you just give it a name and select a photo what the ethos will do is assume that you are trying to set up a flying wing and it will do elevon mixing but since this is a traditional tail plane I hit traditional and you can see that it has one channel for one servo for the elevator and one servo for the rudder that's correct give it a name and a picture I've already went ahead and built this model to save some time and if I go into model um, you'll see that it's actually built right there and we're selected on there so it's ready to go I'm inside the model um, the first thing you want to do is of course associate a receiver to with this transmitter um, if you haven't done so yet you have to go to a registration and bind process. I'm briefly going to just discuss what that means. Um, the registration process happens right here where it says set register. And what that is, is it, there's a passphrase that's sent from the transmitter to the receiver. That passphrase is more or less is like a 
like branding that that receiver you belong to me and the receiver in exchange gets information back to the transmitter such as this this is what type of receiver i am and then here's my firmware information so it's really cool um once it's registered you can register before you even bind this so you can go ahead and register the receiver and then at some point later on down the road you can put in a plane and hit bind usually by the time you put in the plane you don't ever want to try to get to you know back into it again to try to you know put a bind plug or, or do anything else and that's what's nice about this because all you have to do is hit the bind button and then um, plug the plane in fire the when the receiver fires up it will say identify itself and the transmitter ethos will say oh yeah i know what this is we've already registered before i'm going to put this receiver right here and in this example i have it's like archer one and an archer two and an archer two so like for example it, this could be uh sr10 pro and these could be both X, m plus receivers so the sr10 pro is a stabilized receiver it could be at the center of the fuselage and the m plus could be on the wings they're all 2.4 gigahertz receivers. They can also, these could be R9 MMs and these could be 900 megahertz receivers and they could be 2.4 right here. So you can have that dual band thing going on. Um, if you want to get to this, everything that's in the transmitter as far as the internal transmitter, um, what's physically inside the case of the transmitter, there's actually not one but two transmit modules one's 2.4 gigahertz and one's 900 megahertz um, you can go into go into here and turn on an external module and you can work with all these pre-canned modules such as um, the one I always like to point out is the XJT light so this one right here flash that to ACCST version one, and then you can work with any transmitter, or I'm sorry, almost any receiver that FR Sky ever made. You can do D16, you can do D8, you can do LR12, which is um, L9R. It was a receiver that was out a few years ago. It was a long range receiver at, at 2.4 gigahertz. It's kind of fun. Um, anyway that's how you do all that good stuff but we're already going to assume that let's just assume you've bound this and you're back to working with the model and you're starting to move the sticks around things are moving but you notice oh my gosh the aileron on the left side is not working right uh, what channel is it i can't remember you could click on the output and if you were to see this move back and forth if i were to move the sticks this would light up on a real transmitter but in a simulated transmitter it doesn't do that um, and I would say oh geez this is the one that's caused me problems click inside of there and it's usually it says normal you change it to inverted hit return and all of a sudden you see it's going different directions channel goes one way mixer goes the other way and that means you reverse that servo you can do that with the other other one rudder uh, elevator you can do that with just any control surface that's backwards okay so we're gonna go into the mixer this is the last section we'll talk about um, there's quite a bit in there the first thing I always talk about is going to edit and making sure you go down to here and throttle cut you have to assign a switch with that and the way to assign a switch is click on active condition and move the switch and when you move the switch it will populate it so wherever that switch is moved to the throttle cut will happen and when the throttle cuts on the throttle doesn't work so that's good that's a good safety mechanism right there and that's all i can talk about for the throttle uh, for the time being um, we'll go into ailerons this is one where um I'm just, you, you probably understand what expo and rates are all about and this is where you set them at so in this example if i wanted to add another curve i go into here and i would change actually go into here and make a new expo this is where i would assign a value this is where i would 
move the sticks the switch around and assign a switch thing is, is that I already set this up I don't need this I can just delete this and this is where you set rates rates are right here um, a little easier again you can see I use the same switch locations so in a sense what I did is I set up an expo curve at 30% on the middle position on the top position there's nothing on either of these right so it's 100% 100% that means when SA is or switch A is all the way to the very top it's 100% there and 100% here when it's in the middle it's at 30% expo and 70% rates when it's on the bottom it's 50 50 50% 50 expo 50% rates um, and what's cool is that if you were to do this on your radio you see the shape of these curves change with each time you move the sticks the everything up and down if you're flying something on expo and 50 50 and it's still twitchy that means your plane's not set up right 50 50 is kind of that should work with anything and what you do is like this is overkill you go back and later and you start reducing these numbers for both expo and for rates so that you, you keep working with these numbers till you find something comfortable differential is essentially when you put the uh, let's say you, you're doing a turn one aileron goes all the way up and the other one should go all the way down what I'm this does is it prevents it from going all the way down by 20% or whatever value you want to give to it you can set it to 15% for example um, then that kind of helps with the smoothness of the turn so that's the aileron channel I am going to show you a wonderful world that sometimes people don't even know exists in this transmitter and that is this little plus button right here in the mixer tab you click on that and there's a bunch of pre-canned mixes you can go in here and you can edit red or elvon you can do all these different things i went through and i picked a couple of them out and if you were to like for example say snap roll you can put it in the last position and this is where you would set it up at i'm going to get out of here and if I don't need that, you can go down here and you can, the last option down is delete. And that gets rid of it. Okay, so this is where I put in um, a couple things of it. Well, I'll, I'll just briefly mention the few things of interest. The aileron rudder, that's when you have a plane that like this that has a traditional tail and what happens some planes are worse at adverse yaw than others that means the nose doesn't exactly follow through in the turn and you have to give it some rudder and if you're not very good at remembering to give rudder you can actually have it programmed in to give a whatever amount of rudder you want you go in here and you can edit that I gave it 20% of rudder with the aileron turns so it gives a little bit rudder you can move it up if you want even more rudder move it down if you want less and throttle elevator would be something more appropriate for a plane like a Bixler that has a pusher prop in right behind the main wing. Uh, those planes always have the motor above the thrust line. So it's strange when you give it power, the, the power actually pushes the nose down instead of up. So in order to combat that, you have to give it elevator. But you can have that automatically program with this edit right here. This uh, and this is the weight I gave is 15%. I can take it up to something higher if I wanted to, and that's going to give even more elevator. So you got to be careful with that. I would be cautious with it at first. I maybe give it you know 15% to start off with, see how it goes, and that's that the last thing I'll talk about is flaps um, flaps are something you really if you've not set up flaps before you have to set up a special curve um, so on here I assigned flaps to a switch one was the middle position one was down position the flaps have to go one direction and they usually have to go down if they go up that was for spoiler on so you don't want that and then this is where the slow up means this is the amount of time it takes for the, the the uh, flaps to go upward and slow down is the amount of time it takes for the flaps to go downward 
Um, and that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. My name is Steve. I can be reached at steve at frsky-rc.com. That's frsky-rc.com. And have a great day. Thanks for watching.